What's up guys, it's Dragon, it's time for some wishful thinking. Fortnite BAR review, go. All right guys, so coming in at $45 after tax at Target, uh, this was the Fortnite BAR. It might have an MSRP of 40. I think that it was between 40 and 50 bucks. It might be different in your local area. I don't know. The BAR, of course, in this case, not standing for Browning's automatic rifle. Uh, it is, in fact, the BAR as the bullpup assault rifle. Now, bullpups tend to be very polarizing in Nerf, given that you don't get any of the tangible benefits in most cases of having a shorter barrel length uh, for an effectively shorter blaster type weapon thing. It's usually just for aesthetics. And in this case, there can be no doubt that as an electronic blaster, it's actually a uh, decrease in the effective performance with this much barrel drag you can expect lower performance. Now, I don't know if it was supposed to be kind of modeled vaguely after a cartoon AUG. I can't speak to any of that, but it comes with a 10 round magazine, uh, a curved 10 round magazine. At 40 bucks, it's about Raven priced. In fact, uh, the Raven used to be a little bit cheaper, but you know, inflation is a, a real bear. So we've got some Fortnite characters over here and then it announces proudly that it's uh, got a converge wrap, which is I guess what this skin on the BAR is supposed to be. I know that skinning things in Fortnite is a big, big deal. That's how uh, Epic Games makes all of their money. And then over here, we just have motorized blasting and acceleration button, which we know, of course, as a rev trigger. And then that it takes elite darts. The last interesting thing on the box is uh, this. There's gonna be something called the heavy sniper rifle. You guys can see it over there. And uh, that's theoretically gonna be a mega blaster. I don't think it's gonna be a mega XL blaster which we haven't had a nerf news about, but Mega XL looks uh, pretty redonkadonk. They're bigger Mega Darts. Now, as far as the blaster goes, we got to get it out of the package. All right, so inside the package, you're going to get the blaster itself, which is a little cumbersome. This could have very easily been an in-strike barrel lug, but it is not. Uh, it's all one blaster, which is why the box is so large. It comes with a built-in scope. There's no removing that, at least uh, without taking the blaster apart. Then you've got the blaster uh, coated in its funky camo of like red and white. So the old candy cane camo, a little uh, a little premature for holidays. And then you've got the 10 round uh, banana magazine. This is actually a unique banana magazine. It's got a, a slightly more cartoonish rounded thing going on at the bottom. Not so unique and special that it's worth like going out of your way to pick these up. After all, it is only a 10 rounder in a shape that makes no sense for it. A uh, traditional box mag would hold 12 of these and be a much more reasonable magazine for this platform. However, you get the blaster, the magazine, and 10 darts. The darts mirror the uh, the candy cane camo on the blaster itself. Now, if you've bought batteries any time in your life, uh, you would know that regardless of whether you paid 40, 42, or 45, you're over 50 bucks by the time you've picked up four of these, uh, these C batteries. So these are brand new Duracells. And then there is a panel on the unpainted side of the blaster, because of course, as a premium video game tie-in, uh, Hasbro can only afford to give you paint on one side of the blaster. Let's uh, go ahead and plug and play our C batteries in here. It only takes four, which means that this is gonna be a six volt blaster. I would not expect it to give us the moon in terms of performance, but if it breaks 70 FPS, that would be the elite standard. And I would be impressed given that there is over 18 inches of barrel drag on this thing. By the time the dart hits the, the propulsion system back here, there's gonna be a flywheel cage just inside of the, uh, well, you guys can actually see it through the built-in jam door there. And then, you know, a lot of barrel to get out of there. Rev switch is actually quite comfortable. The overall grip isn't bad. A little thin in some places, but you do get a built-in foregrip. You could, of course, grip here as well. Although this is a little close for comfort, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna use the built-in vertical foregrip. Uh, I don't think that you're gonna be doing anything like this with your bullpup. Now, for some reason, I get a lot of battery wobble in there. Hopefully that isn't an issue. And a uh, blaster will rev without a magazine in it, which is kind of interesting in and of itself. Now, of course, with the jam door open, it will stop revving. That means that it's got the traditional safety mechanism. And like I said, up top here, there is a scope. The scope has one, two, three, four in strike rail attachments in case you need scopes on your scopes or lasers on your scopes or grips on your scopes. Whatever your scoping desires might be, this thing's got you covered. I guess they got tired of me complaining that some of these video game tie-in blasters weren't taking advantage of in-strike accessibility and attachments. And instead of, you know, making the scope an in-strike attachment on a rail on the blaster, they decided to go really shoot for the moon and do this, this nonsense, as well as uh, not make the bear, whatever. I don't, I don't necessarily understand it, but again, we're hoping for 70 FPS performance. Once this is loaded, 
a relatively stiff trigger pull, certainly less comfortable than the Raven before it. That's both because the trigger itself is quite thin to get the aesthetic and it seems like it's using a compression spring. It does give you a cleaner trigger pull. You definitely know that you're engaging that, uh, that main trigger, but the rev switch, a little thin for the grip. Overall, ergonomics aren't bad. If you like bull pups, this is fine. Although the button up here being so far in this, uh, this channel, as opposed to being a switch like I'm used to, I'm used to like popping there and pulling out, uh, which is a little more comfortable for me, I suppose. It, it feels more natural. This is, uh, this is push up and then pull out. It's actually not the best bullpup ergo I've ever uh, encountered, but you know, your character does that in the video game. If you want a super competitive Raven, <laughs> I'm sorry, if you want a super competitive bullpup, I think that the Raven being more compact with less barrel drag and better ergonomics is probably the way to go. But if you're super into the Fortnite candy cane aesthetic, this is what you got. It's on shelves right now. I think that all that's left to do is get some chronograph numbers, let you know what you can expect in terms of real world performance. Let's go. All right, guys, so I braved the mosquitoes and it looks like so did Jinx so that we could uh, get some chronograph data on this for you, but we do not want to be out here for very, very long. Jinx, you're right where I need you not to be, sweetheart. I could probably shoot under her legs, but I, I would never, never fire a Nerf blaster at uh, little Jay. So let's tilt this this way, maybe a little further. So there's A73. I got a couple of errors before that. A duplicate 73, so I think that that's, there we go, thank goodness. A 71. Jinx, you're killing me. Jinx, this is, this is how we pay for all of your vacations. Come on. Come on, girl. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Come here. Nope. All right, she's very curious. 69, 80, 71, 70. All right, so I don't know what we have left now. One dart. This is not the most scientific uh, video we've done in a while. Here's a uh, ant chewed up. Here's a couple. All right, so we'll grab a couple of darts over here just to put down range after this one, but we'll shoot the brand new one first. I think that with that, you can expect elite style performance, which is to say, wow. You know, you just, you really do forget how bad elite darts are until you fire them. Um, but that literally did like a wee spiral into what it was going for. If we set this at, you know, right around 25 feet here, maybe that's going to be our goal. Can we hit a 25 foot target with the, uh, exactly jinx. Exactly. All right. We're going to angle into it. Nope. And a miss lads. So, uh, if you're looking for a performance-based blaster, this one's a, an easy skip. If you're looking for something that's got a, a vaguely kind of bullpup, real steel cartoon rifle kind of feel, this is not a, a bad option. The shell is certainly interesting. I personally prefer the Raven. But if you're looking for something to paint up or something to modify, the, uh, the Fortnite BAR might not be the worst option in terms of Hasbro things on the shelf. The Fortnite blasters have been relatively moddable. I know that you could fit a Nyx cage in the old AR. I have no idea what the shell geometry for the cages in here, but hopefully it's not that bad. We'll definitely crack it open if you guys leave enough comments asking me to do a modification guide for it. It might be worth cracking open and painting. It's actually flat enough everywhere that it could even hydro nicely, although hydro dipping in this weather sounds pretty miserable. All the same, that is our review. I think that for me personally, this is like a wait for it to go on sale and then it's a pretty mean pickup. But at uh, 40 whatever dollars plus the C batteries, if you're not planning on lipoing it, if you're not planning on modifying it, I think that it's worth waiting on because there will be more Fortnite blasters. There'll probably be more Roblox blasters and uh, it'll definitely have to fight for its shelf space and then eventually lose that battle and go on sale. But if you're looking for one, we picked ours up at Target. I have no referral code for you. It's just an option out there. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Helps you make a slightly better purchasing decision all on your own. Much love, blast on, drag out.